Hey guys, it's Alex, and a lot's been going on in the last couple of weeks, uh, professional and personal life, so I'll get you caught up eventually, but there was a good subject matter that came up on the internet again, and I, I feel like I have to address it. What do you need a tune for? Okay, a lot of people buy parts, and then they put it on the car, and they go, hey, I need a tune for this. So I'm going to try to whittle it down into simple ways of explaining it as to what is tunable or what is not needing a tune. You can just slap it on and go ahead. Any cap back exhaust, any cap back exhaust, I don't care if it's 10 inch, 3 inch, 2.5 inch, 4 inch, doesn't matter the brand, doesn't matter nothing. After the rear O2 sensor, you could do whatever the hell you want. You could dump it, put Borla's Ford rate, who cares? It does not need a retune for a cap back exhaust, coyote car, hell, any car. If there's no sensor back there, there's no reason to ask for a tune revision, okay? Drive shafts. You don't need a tune revision for a drive shaft. Well, now, the thinking is this. A lot of people overthink things, and overthinking things is one of the major, major issues that a lot of us get from customers. Well, if the drive shaft is a spin, if there's less rotating mass, won't it need a retune? No, no, plain and simple, no. It is a mechanical advantage. Do you need a retune for gears? Well, the only reason you need a retune for gears on a manual car is for your speedo to work and your cruise control to work properly. Now, if you install a T56, man, it's hot in here. I gotta turn this sucker back on, ooh wee. If you install a T56 transmission like I did, the only reason you need a retune for is so your speedometer works. That's it, you guys saw what I did with how many teeth are in the OSS, uh, OSS sensor and the gear ratio, but in terms of you can go race it, it doesn't matter, your speedo will just be wrong on an automatic. You absolutely do need a retune when you swap gears out. Why? Well, the cars, you have to tell the car what axle ratio is in the car. For 11 to 14, 15 and up is a bit of a gray area. 15 and up is a little different. 15 and up, I think, don't quote me, but I think the sample, the miles per hour differently, I think via the body control module as opposed to the computer, the, 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 the engine computer for lack of a better word. But don't quote me on that. I'm not gonna say that's a matter of fact. Um, 11 to 14, if you got an auto, if you go from a 315 to a 355 for a mechanical advantage, your tuner will have to redo the shift points, tell them which axle you have. You know, the shifts on these cars are anticipated, meaning when it's revving up, it will anticipate the shift, so it'll, it'll command the shift. Let's say, for instance, you anticipate the shift at I'm sorry, you want it to shift at 7,300. Well, you have to anticipate it like at seven so that by the time the engine goes, oh, seven, fluids do their thing and the actual shift happens, you have to, you know, you have to command it a little earlier than when you want it. So you need a little bit of back and forth. Now, HP tuners has a provi uh, provision in their software where you turn off anticipated uh, logic and you could make a shift at the exact RPM that you want. Um, that is HP tuner specific, but I primarily and the company uh, deals with SCT and that's the way we like it. We like our files are set up and nothing against HP tuners, but we we primarily do SCT. So uh, headers, long tube headers. Now that's the other one where people go, well, volumet volumetric efficiency changed. Don't you need a retune? And a couple of other tuning companies have been caught saying, no nah, man, it's baked in and a lot of people make fun. Well, believe it or not, it's kind of sort of baked in. Meaning the car can account for the movement of the O2s further down. So if you get long tubes, bigger tubes, bigger primaries, then the O2 location, the first one, goes from right next to the engine to just below the engine. So that spacing, you know, you have to account for it in the tune to say, hey, the transport delay is a little more, you know, with a certain percentage further down. So, hey, don't wig out. But I personally have seen cars uh, where they shove long tubes in it and they don't retune for them and the car never kicks a light for anything and, and it's a happy car. But it's always good to, to tell your tuner, I got a set of long tubes in the bitch and uh, you know, see what you can do and he'll take care of you that way. Cold airs. Now, PMAS has a no tune required cold air, but it comes with a MAF sensor. So it's already calibrated. It already has a MAF curve built in, for lack of a better word. So the PMAS, no tune required cold air, shove it on, see you later. Now, if you only buy the MAF housing, filter, and elbow, then and you're gonna use your stock sensor, yes, you will need a retune. Almost all the cold airs on the market need a retune. Air Aid, CNL, Roush cold air intakes have an insert, some of them, and that insert is the same size as stock, 
so that you do not need a tune the moment you take that insert off now the housing is bigger you will need a retune for that okay boss intake uh, if you put a boss intake in the car need a tune um, again it's a mechanical advantage but if you swing the cam a little different the car the car is happy um, what else so we already did that we did long tubes we did we did cold airs we did intake manifold and again cobra jet intake obviously you need a retune because the throttle body is going to be a twin bore style throttle body but again uh, oh, also the um, catalytic converters if you get high flow cats I would also have your tuner take a look at the tune get data logs for them and you're good to go but things that are mechanical that are rotating like a clutch if you put a clutch in you don't need a tune you just need to do a crank relearn why because the reluctor wheel in the back where the actual crank sensor is located if you jostle it around a little bit while you're putting the clutch in it might not be sampling the correct timing so if i were you guys after you install a clutch definitely on your set do a crank relearn hell even do a cam reset so any learned values learned bad habits that potentially were there are cleared out and the car has a clean slate typically tuners out there that have um SET, you know, they, they support SET stuff. They tell you to flash over their file. Other tuners tell you to return to stock so that you flash the whole file and that nothing gets crossed over that shouldn't be. That's not bad practice, but it is a little time consuming. If you have to return to stock, then flash the tune over again. But Sean at AED taught me that it, it transfers the whole file over as opposed to just the changes. So it's good practice if you guys have the time and, and you know, you're not pressed for time. Plain and simple. Now, during the flash process, a lot of times the SCT device likes to just brick. It likes to just be like, fuck you, your tune's corrupted, eat a dick, go fuck yourself, return to stock. And you're like, god damn SCT. Well, look, this is another hint when you're flashing uh, that, you know, will probably never have that come up. Put a trickle charger on your battery, okay? Put a trickle charger on your battery. Trust me, if you have a supercharged vehicle that has a heat exchanger and a intercooler pump when you key on all that shit's running unless you disconnect the fuses and it will drain your battery slowly and the flash process drains your battery slowly so do yourself a favor and you know make sure everything is off or put a trickle charger or a battery charger on your you know on your in your on your car as it's flashing so that voltage there isn't big voltage spikes lows highs and the car flashes good nine times out of ten the the reasons people have issues flashing a car is because they have a return style fuel system that is triggered on with the key and it's constantly drawing 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 down the battery and the battery says ah, not enough voltage mid flash and it breaks and you have to start all over again so hopefully you guys uh learn a little bit about the tricks and tips and what needs a retune and what doesn't and when flashing a vehicle with set put a trickle charger on that sucker because you don't want that sucker to break and then you have to start all over thanks for watching guys we'll talk to you later so I just received a video from the guy who uh, had the Paxton 2200 in his car. He took it down to a dyno. Now, what? why did he take it down to a dyno? I offered to tune the car for him because it was acting a little weird. And I wanted to just R&D the car because I had a pretty baller fuel system. I wondered what our tune would do in the car. And these are the results. I was actually pretty amazed.